Over here we have some elephant dung, quite uh, easy to identify. One is by the colour, it is brown in colour due to the tannins that uh, will be in the leaves that it eats. And also if we open it up, you can see inside here there's twigs, there's grasses, there's quite a mixture of vegetation in here. And some seasons you'll even find fruit, undigested fruit inside of elephant dung. Now elephants, they don't chew their food properly and they've also got an extremely poor digestive system. They will only digest about 40% of what they eat, all right? Therefore they need to eat practically the whole day, about 18 to 20 hours of the day they need to feed. And because they're eating so much, about 5% of their total body weight in a day, they also need to defecate quite a few times. An adult elephant bull can go to the toilet about 20 times a day, producing 100 kilograms of dung in a single day. Now, around elephant dung, this will attract a lot of other animals. Um, birds will come through here, insects will come here, and they will all use it to feed on it. So you'll find insects coming and eating inside here, or laying eggs inside of the dung. Birds coming to it to eat any seeds, or even the insects themselves, and even squirrels and that coming to look for any nuts. Uh, anything that they can find. As I open this up I can actually already see some beetles that are starting to feast at this uh, elephant dung. Uh, traditionally uh, people would use this for uh, clearing sinuses. It's believed by lighting it and it smolders very easily. Inhale the smoke through your nostrils and it will open up your sinuses. So yeah, this elephant dung that I'm showing you here uh, it's fairly fresh, I'd say probably in the last 24 hours. It's dried on the outside, but as I open it up, it's still quite moist on the inside. Right over here, we've got a impala midden. Um, quite interesting, you can see a lot of dung around here. And the reason for this is this is how a male impala will mark his territory. Now, impala are only territorial seasonally, so meaning only for one season of the whole year and it's the it's to indicate um, the breeding season it normally starts around about the end of march till about the end of june beginning of july it will end and during that time males can be quite aggressive uh, in defending a small little territory which they will mark with uh, glands between their horns rubbing it uh, along branches and that and then also like i said this impala midden over here so the purpose of this whole midden is to have all the uh, impala's dung, the male impala's dung, all concentrated in a specific spot so that it will increase the, the, sense, the scent, sorry, the, the smell. And when a new male takes over, he will come and defecate on top of the old male's um, dung. Now females who come across this area will also see this midden and will realize that there's a strong healthy male in the area and males tend to mark an area where there's a good supply of drinking water and also a good graze and even browse as they, they do both. Um, yeah, if you just want to pick some up, you can actually feel them. They're quite old. And the breeding season is what we call the rutting season, um, which deer have in the, all over the world as well, and all the antelope. Rut, me, is a Hindu word, which means to roar. So it's a roaring season, and that's because male impala will, uh, during the re uh, rutting season, make a lot of loud calls. It literally sounds like a roar, and a lot of people can mistake in their call sometimes for even a leopard roar. We've got quite an interesting tree to talk about today. Uh, it's called the Magic Wari, and it's fairly common here at Makani very easily identified by the leaves it is evergreen and also the leaves are narrow and quite wavy this tree produces uh, extremely edible uh, berries which uh, have just come out of the season but the berries are quite small and they're purple in color which a lot of animals and birds will feed off of even humans we will pick them and eat them as well and even use these purple berries as a dye to dye clothes or a stain. This particular tree, well, all the magic warriors actually, contain very high levels of fluoride, right, which is quite good for your teeth. So people back in the day used to dig up for the roots and they would chew on the roots. 
to help strengthen their teeth but this tree we can also make a toothbrush out of it by breaking off a branch pulling off the bark and chewing on it to make bristles now depending on how long you chew on it for will depend on how hard or soft these bristles will become and we've got a nice little toothbrush checked in our teeth we've come across a buffalo cow skull and I've noticed a few interesting things on this particular skull um, firstly if you look at the front of the skull over here the nasal area you can see that our hyenas have chewed it off um, and to get inside and eat away at the cartilage you'll also notice quite a bit of mud uh, on the front of the skull over here, especially down the side of the horn and on the side here and even on this branch. It's indication of a, a warthog that has been in the mud wallow and he's come to rub the mud off of his body or smother it over his whole body. There's also proof that it was a warthog, as you can see the droppings with the dung from this warthog just next to the skull. Um, and yeah, the most interesting thing actually is let me move this log that this horn as we speak as i speak is actually being fed upon by a very interesting little critter now if you can see these brown like muddy patches you can say along at the bottom of the horn yeah that is actually the excretions from a larv from the larval um, stage of a horn boring moth and now what happens is these horn boring moths actually eat away at the keratin part of the horn which is like your fingernails it also contains a lot of melanin in it and they will eat away at it and it will take a couple of years before all of this keratin gets eaten away each little individual uh, larval larvae can feed, live for about two years before pupating into a moth so yeah there you have it some interesting things around a buffalo skull Over here we have elephant dung, quite easily, uh, oh, come on man, very interesting uh, with, no let's do it again, uh, to pull apart, no, let's start again, alright let's go, around Makani, when it produces wrong berries because I got that wrong, let's do it again. You also use it as a diet. <laughs> Cons. Humber lang ding dong, humber lang ding dong ding dong, hinder lang dong ding dong dong. And we'll find a silent just in case. Now buffalo blah blah da ding dong. Over here we've got a row. Sit the bagat. Along its body, you probably it's a typical gato shiny for there now. No, I was oh, nearly good. I oh, know, mess it up. <laughs> From a cow, dao, duple cat dao, for the picture. And yeah, it's been fairly chewed up, not blah blah. Let's start again. I was on such a roll there, hey? Fucked my attention. Look at that, it's good. The skull, uh, buffalo, okay, we'll do it one more time. I messed up there. Ha! 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 Over here, no, wait, wait, I wasn't in my prom. 